Hello, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. This is Jill. Have you wondered how a form of comedy, namely improv, can help you do better in a lot of different aspects of your life? That's what we'll talk about today. It's better to be absolutely ridiculous than to be absolutely boring. Marilyn Monroe. Today, we're going to talk about a form of comedy called improv. And if you've never been to an improv showing, it's really worth checking out. They are people who can think on their feet and do comedy based on the environment around them, the people around them, the audience around them. It's not a set amount of jokes that you memorize and you tell in stand up. It is about reacting to the things around you. And if you get into improv, there are a lot of things that it can do for you because it can really help you at all sorts of tasks when it comes to parenting, being a spouse, being a friend, being at work, getting new jobs all sorts of skills. It helps you really to become bold, but not just that. It helps you accept some new strange thing that's coming your way without overthinking it. It also helps us overcome any sorts of fears we might have of being in front of people. It helps you to think of fun things to do as compared to taking the most dour take on something. It can help you in terms of confidence and reading other people whether you're carefully listening to what they're talking about or you're reading their body language, because the whole idea behind improv is making jokes as a team by listening to everybody else around you. And some ways that it helps really encourage you is that, first of all, it encourages people to really just be there in that moment. You can't think about your next joke. You can't really even think about the next thing you're going to say, because the next thing you're going to say is based on the thing that is happening around you. So that means you have to very carefully listen to other people. It means that you have to develop connections with other people so that you can see where they're going with a joke and then take off on that joke and go even further with it. It encourages you to take some risks. Comedy is about risks. And if you stay safe all the time and you do the most bare minimum thing, you're not gonna get the jokes. You're not gonna get the laughs. So it encourages you to be bold, take risks, and say yes to the things that the other person is saying to you. The other thing is that it causes you to act as a team. Improv is about working together and making everybody on the floor look great, maybe even making the audience look great. So it's not about you going and taking and dunking that big joke. It's about all of you being funny together as a team. You make your team look good. You make the audience look good. And everybody goes home at night feeling great about what they did. It's really about trust, collaboration, and working together. So one of the biggest things that you have to do when you are doing improv is you have to say yes to everything. If someone comes at you with a joke and says, wow, your hat is funny, you can't say, no, it's not really funny. The joke dies. There's nothing else left to say. That other person has nothing they can go on. So what you have to do is say, yes, and my mother gave it to me, and she wore it every day. You take off at that period and make it even funnier. So instead of ever saying no to something on the stage, you're always saying yes and. And that's what makes everything so funny. So it helps you learn something to be adaptive, to say yes to things, and to think of witty ways out of situations. Remember, too, that improv is also about failing. Even when someone fails at a joke, it's funny. It's funny to watch people on stage strive to be hilarious. And you know what? Sometimes it falls flat and we laugh at that too. So we learn to accept our failings a little bit better. And it helps with our speaking skills. When you're doing comedy, you have to be choosy about what words you're using. You have to think about what you're going to say next. And so it helps your communication skills and helps you be more economical with your words because you only have a few moments before the next person is going to say something funny too. There is this concept in improv that's called the callback, which means that someone tells a joke. I just told a joke about my awful hat and how my mother wore it every day. Now it's up to the next person to make another funny joke about that hat. They call it the rule of threes, where you're always trying to at least do three jokes about the same thing before it's over with and the topic is spent. But you've seen callbacks before in terms of memes. So that means when you look at a meme and someone uses it and then someone finds another funny way to use that same meme, it starts building on itself. 
it gets better and better each time. And that's what the callback is. Keep in mind that it's not just about telling one joke about something. It's about telling multiple jokes about the same thing. And I mentioned the other great thing about improv is that it's about making everyone on the stage look good. You don't want to just sit there and be the funniest person on that stage and slam dunk everything. And the whole team that's on the stage walks away feeling like you stole a victory from them. Everybody is supposed to look good. So it's about making that joke set up so that they can tell a great joke, too. It's almost like volleyball where you're setting the ball so that the next person can hit it. Nobody is a volleyball player on a team of one. The whole team is needed in order to make the whole series of jokes funny. Stanford Magazine did an article called The Eight Lessons You Can Learn From Improv, and it has some interesting business uses when it comes to improv and some interesting comments from different writers about the value of improv and how it taught them how to do better. A fellow named Jacob Klein mentioned that it helps you to pay attention. Again, this is about teamwork of jokes. And so that means you have to pay attention to exactly what the other person is saying. They're going to set the ball for you. So you have to listen to them so you know how to slam it down, how to make that joke stick. So listening and paying attention is important. But it means you also have to pay attention to everything, not just what they're saying. You have to pay attention to the props in their hand, their body language, everything that's going on in the stage if the audience is laughing. So it really encourages you to focus on the moment and not think about the future. What joke am I going to tell? Or think about the past. What joke did I tell? And boy, that didn't go very well. You have no choice except to focus on the present. Another fellow named Jonathan Pally said that it helps us to make ourselves obvious. You can't be obscure with a joke if you try to set someone up with this really hilarious joke. and. Stand-up comedians are great at that. They kind of hide exactly where they're going with it. But in improv, you have to be obvious. You have to use your body, your voice, what you're pointing at to just make it so that everybody understands exactly what you're going to talk about, exactly where this joke is going. In that same article, Ryan Laponis said that one of the best things about improv is, is that you realize you do not have control. That's really a big metaphor for our lives in the world. In stand-up comedy, you're going through this list of jokes and you're putting them in a certain order and you know where there are people going to laugh and where people aren't going to laugh. But at improv, everything takes a direction in any possible way. It is hard to know exactly how anyone is going to go with a joke or what's going to happen next or if the table in the front row of the bar is going to fall over. It helps you accept the fact that you don't have control over every situation and to make the best of each situation. And Claire Slattery reminds us that improv, like I said before, is something you can't do alone, that you learn from other people, you tap into other people, you have this open partnership right there in front of the entire stage about helping people with their jokes, them helping you with your jokes, and working together in order to make the whole evening successful. In that same article, Lisa Rowland mentioned that the best part about improv is that it focuses us on the how and not the what. We're going to go into this improv situation. We don't know what's going to happen. Again, it's going to be spontaneous. And so all we're doing is we're showing up to that session, the workshop, the evening, the improv, and just saying, all I'm doing is showing up. My promise is to come here and do my best, show up, be courageous and do the best job I can, being fun, being funny, and helping my teammates go. So really what you're committing to is not an outcome. You're committing to just being there and listening and doing all the things that you need to do. An article on FullyLive.com talks about being vulnerable. Some of the most important comedy events out there are the ones where we are vulnerable to the audience, where we're not putting up this shell. What you want to do is when you open up or use real words, that's when it's really going to get people's attention. And in general, that's true of speaking, conversations, anything that you have. Empty words leave audiences feeling empty. But when you're vulnerable, when you say something that requires a little bit of trust from your partner and the audience, that's when the real magic happens. So make sure that you're vulnerable with your jokes 
and not just responding with the most clever thing you can think of. The article also says that you want to be honest when you're doing comedy, and that's when true improv happens. You can try to plan ahead and do some jokes, but it's not really going to work as well in improv as it works other ways. And so by being honest and sincere and telling a joke in that moment, that is what's going to really connect with people and be among the funniest things that happened that whole evening or event. When you start unfiltering yourself, when you stop thinking so much and you just say the honest thing, that's what really is going to make this work. He mentions that John Lennon, quote, life is what happens when you're making other plans. Improv is what happens when you're making other plans, too. You might think that this is how the night's going to go, but true improv and letting go and being courageous is about you having those real moments in comedy and real moments on the stage with the other people. There's an interesting book out there called Play Your Way Sane, 120 Improv-Inspired Exercises to Help You Calm Down, Stop Spiraling, and Embrace Uncertainty by Clay Drinko, PhD. It's an interesting book. It's not as close to improv as I would have liked it because I thought I was going to see a lot more of the actual improv style things in there. He does have some, but it does have a lot of interesting challenges to you so that you can kind of look at the world in a different way. And when you look at the world in a different way, suddenly everything has a new perspective. And that's what he's trying to get you to do. First thing he wants you to do is walk around a room and just start noticing. And then he wants you to start labeling them. First, you start out with the basic labels. Microphone, vase, statue, window, door. That's pretty easy. And he said the rule of this game is that every time you notice it, you're only allowed to notice one thing about it, one detail about that particular thing. And then you move on and then you notice other things. The whole idea is for you to be detached and just noticing items. Then he talks about his next game where you start adding descriptions to the things that you're noticing it. So before it was just sidewalk. Now it's maybe wrecked sidewalk or painted sidewalk. Or you see a flower and you say red flower. So the next step is to go around, look at things and start giving them a descriptor. Notice one thing about them and don't get judgmental. It's not a bad flower. It's not a smelly flower. Just notice a thing about it and keep it very neutral. He says that once you've dedicated yourself to giving these positive descriptions of the things around you, you'll start to land on fewer, quote, crappier thoughts you'll start seeing things in a more calm way, in a more positive way, if you keep yourself from describing things with negative terms. It keeps you positive. Then another one of his games is he calls it a museum is just a store where you can't buy the things. But sometimes what he likes to do is go to a museum or maybe walk down a street or someplace where you really can't buy the things that are around you and pretend that you're shopping. And walk around the museum or the street or your office and say, oh, you know, I really like that. I think I would buy that. And just pretend like you're shopping in a place you cannot shop. Buying things you cannot buy. But I tried it out and it was kind of funny. It made me pay attention a lot more to some of the things that I was not paying attention to. Because suddenly when you think about the thought, I might buy this, you suddenly focus on a whole different set of things. He has another exercise he calls shake it off. And that means you jump around, you wiggle around. And the idea is that you're having a negative thought, you're having stress, you're having distractions, anything that might be negative in your current state. What you do is you just jump around, you make a weird noise. And the whole idea, and maybe you do this in private, is to just get rid of all that bad emotion and just be silly for a moment. And that gets your mind distracted, it gets your body involved. And then when you're done with this silly little exercise, you suddenly realize that your brain is better off than it was before. It's not quite the same thing, but once when I was interviewing for my very first job interview, my friend played the song Locomotion by Kylie Minogue and made me dance around the living room to this song. Now, anyone who knows me knows that one, I don't really like music that much. Two, I don't really dance at all, and I find it embarrassing. But you know what? After I did that for a few minutes, dancing around to locomotion, I suddenly did feel better. And I walked into my job interview 
miraculously a lot less stressed than I was before my friend made me do that. So just having weird motions like that can help you get over some negative feelings. In the article on Backstage.com, some lessons when it comes to how to do improv are really interesting here. It has some of the things I mentioned before, the yes and, it talks about how you should listen, but it also says that you have to be more decisive. And I thought that was an important fact because you can't just sit up there when someone's saying, oh, and I saw that awful hat you're wearing today, and then just stop. And, oh no, what am I going to say? What am I going to say? You have to be quick and decisive. And that's where you're going to jump in. And even if it's not going to be as funny as maybe the thing you're going to think of a second later, but by forcing yourself to jump in and be decisive, it will help you be funny. It will keep you from spiraling out of control and it will help you react more quickly to stressful situations in the future. Improv 2 is going to help you learn who you are, according to this article. It'll show you what is inside of you. It'll show you what kind of actions you take, how you respond to certain things. You will realize that if you deflect, if you say the funny thing, if you're using a critic inside of you, whatever you're doing that's coming out in your jokes, you'll learn something about yourself and the idea is that you'll improve session after session. But in theory, that's also making you improve as a human being, too. I hope that helps in giving you some ideas about improv and some ways that improv can help you in your normal life. You can certainly practice this with a friend. You can certainly look at videos of YouTube that describe on how to do improv, or you can go to an improv class that a lot of places have, workshops and that, which are amazing. And I plan on totally doing that because I think it would be a lot of fun and a great learning experience. Or you can just Buy tickets and go see improv at a night and see how it's done. It is fascinating to watch people quickly stand up on their feet and say something funny. Make the whole team funny. And now for our fun entertainment advice of the week. This one comes from Gladiator and Russell Crowe. You ask me what I want. I too want to stand in front of the emperor. As you did. And listen to me. Learn from me. I wasn't the best because I killed quickly. I was the best because the crowd loved me. Win the crowd, and you'll win your freedom. I will win the crowd. I will give them something they've never seen before. <laughs> That's right. If you can please the audience, you can win your freedom. And the audience enjoys themselves too. And maybe it's not so serious as in the gladiator's life, but it's still wonderful to make a big impression. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you have a great week. Remember that if you could please review the podcast or leave me any comments or questions you have at at jillatsmallstepspod.com, I'd appreciate it. Have a great week.